know what you eat can speed up or slow down the wound healing process. In today's video, we'll uncover how nutrition plays a vital role in the wound healing process, helping your body heal faster and more effectively. We're going to discuss the most important nutrients that support wound healing and why they matter and how to incorporate them into your diet for optimal recovery. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and I'm a wound care specialist in Ontario, Canada. So my passions are everything about wound healing and optimizing the body to feel its best and to heal those wounds. So that's exactly what I'm doing with this video. It's an educational video of how nutrition is going to affect your body and speed up that healing process. We really want to optimize the body just to have its full healing potential while we're trying to heal, especially those chronic wounds or post-surgical wounds. This is great for all of those types of wounds. Even if you're trying to prepare your body for surgery, it is great to start prepping beforehand, get your body in that optimal state, and then healing and recovery is a whole lot easier. So let's get started, guys. So we first need to understand the wound healing process. So there is four stages to wound healing. We have the hemostasis phase, inflammatory phase, proliferation, and maturation phase. So first stage, the hemostasis, this is where we stop bleeding. And the inflammatory phase is when we're fighting infection and starting to repair tissues. Proliferation phase is when new tissues and blood vessels form. And the maturation phase, this is also called the remodeling phase, where the wound starts to remodel, the wound contracts and strengthens. Now that can take up to a year to fully heal. So what the body does, as you can see in the pictures, is with the bricks, it just kind of is all in a pile. So what the body does is works really fast to heal the wound. So it just kind of piles it all up there. And then in the maturation phase or remodeling phase, it's all laid out very nicely. And that's when the wounds healed. But that phase can take up to that year mark. So now let's get into the different nutrients and how they affect wound healing. So proteins up first. So the importance of protein. So it is critical for tissue repair and regeneration. It's needed for collagen formation, which is essential for wound closure. Now sources of protein are lean meats, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy, beans, nuts, and tofu. And the recommended intake, so we want to ensure that we're consuming adequate amounts of protein every single day. So it is roughly 1.2 to 1.5 grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight. Next up, we have vitamin C. So vitamin C is vital for collagen synthesis and immune function. It helps your body produce collagen, which is great for structural framework and wound healing. The sources of vitamin C are citrus fruits, strawberries, kiwi, bell peppers, broccoli, and tomatoes, just to name a few. Now your recommended intake, so you want to aim for about 75 to 90 milligrams a day during the healing process, higher amounts may be beneficial. And then we have zinc. So zinc is important to help cell division, collagen formation, and immune function. A deficit can impair the wound healing process. So sources of zinc are meat, shellfish, legumes, seeds, nuts, and dairy products. And the recommended intake is 8 to 11 milligrams daily. For wound healing. Higher doses may be necessary, but this is uh, under a healthcare supervision. Next up, we have vitamin A. So vitamin A supports skin and mucal health, promotes collagen formation, and enhances the immune function. Carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach, kale, liver, and fortified dairy products are all sources of vitamin A. Now it's important that we're getting our vitamins through our food because we want to avoid an excess uh, intake of vitamin A, okay? So because it can become toxic to the body, but if we're just obtaining our vitamin A through our food, you're not going to get into that toxic rate. It's more when people start taking supplements. So I did just wanna add that here uh, just in case. We always wanna make sure um, our body can absorb it a lot better and it's more bioavailable when it's coming from a food source. Next, we have our omega-3 fatty acids. So our omega-3 fatty acids, they do help reduce inflammation and support 
support the healing process by promoting cell, men cell membrane health. Sources of omega-3s are fatty fish, so your salmon, mackerel, sardines, black seeds, chai seeds, and even walnut. So we want to aim for at least two to three servings of fatty fish per week or include plant-based omega-3s into your diet. Now, when it comes to wounds, we want to completely avoid nutrient deficiency. It delays wound healing, increases risk of infection. So we really want to work and focus on our nutrients and bringing in those nutritional foods into our diet. I know a lot of times, because uh, I hear it all the time, I, I just haven't been hungry because when we have uh, chronic wounds going on, a, a lot of times patients aren't hungry. But when they do eat, we want to make sure that they are eating nutrient-based foods, okay? If we can get in as much nutrients into a meal as possible, the better. So signs of a deficiency. So if you're noticing a poor wound healing, slow recovery, frequent infections, this could all be due to a nutrient deficiency. So once again, we want to focus on a balanced diet and consider working with a dietitian. Now, I also have available on Amazon the Wound Healing Cookbook, as you can see here. Now, all these recipes, there is a ton for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and different snacks. They are all packed with all the nutrients that you need to support wound healing and optimize your health. So this is an awesome book if you're going in for surgery or you have a chronic wound or you're trying to heal from surgery. All of these are going to help optimize your body. So it is a great resource for patients trying to heal. And once again, I'll link it down below in the description, a clickable link to my Amazon page um, if anybody is interested in this book. I thought I would just uh, put in a few sample meals here from the book um, just to give you an idea of the type of meals. They are very nutrient-based. Now you can add in anything you would like to these recipes. That's the great thing. They are base recipes. They provide all the nutrients that you need for wound healing and to support your body. But just like I have right here, the vegetarian chili, you can add meat to this. Perfectly acceptable. Add some ground beef or some chicken. It's just going to increase the protein and increase the nutrients, okay? So these are base recipes. You don't have to go buy the tea with them and you can add anything to your liking. So I have a vegetable omelet, Greek yogurt parfait, a vegetarian chili, grilled shrimp tacos. There is awesome recipes in here and I really made it so everybody can find something that they like. Also at the back of the book, there is a list of different foods that you can add into your favorite meals and they're categorized by nutrients. So once again, this is an amazing resource for anyone who is dealing with chronic wounds. So it's not only our food intake, but it's also hydration. So the amount of fluid that we're drinking definitely affects wound healing also. So proper hydration is essential for nutrient transport, cell function during the healing process. Dehydration can lead to slower healing and increased risk of infection. So like I said, it's so important that we are eating our proper nutrients, but it's very important that we're getting enough fluids to transport the nutrients to and throughout our body. So how much fluid should you be drinking in a day? So you want to drink at least eight cups of water a day. And if you're having a lot of exudate coming from the wound, you want to balance that out. So say you're losing a lot of exudate a day, about a half a cup to a cup of fluids through that wound. You want to make sure that you are once again, increasing the fluid amount and drinking that back because you are going to have some evaporation from the exudate of the wound. So you want to make sure that you're replacing that, especially if you have a heavy exudating wound. This also goes for if you're in a warmer client or it's in the dead of summer, you want to be increasing the amount of fluids that you are taking. So some tips to staying hydrated. You can also add foods that have a lot of fluid in them. So cucumbers, watermelon, soups, these are all going to increase the amount of fluids that you're taking. It doesn't just have to be water. Um, 
I always tell people, spice up your water a little bit. Put some lemon, some lime, um, even a little bit of cinnamon, some spices. It, it really doesn't matter uh, what you put into your water, some fruit. You can kind of spice it up a little bit so it's not so plain because I do know a lot of people have some issues with drinking plain water. Now you can drink broths. Coffee is very dehydrating. So you want to be cautious with the amount of coffee that you're drinking. But with that said, just increase the amount of fluids is going to definitely help you and try to hit that eight cups per day. So other factors that are going to also affect the wound healing process. So first up is rest and sleep. We want to make sure that we are getting that seven to nine hours of sleep every single day. This is going to help our body repair and regenerate those tissues. And then we have smoking and alcohol. So both smoking and alcohol can impair our blood flow. When we impair our blood flow, it means the nutrients can't get to the wound as well as it should. That also means oxygen is not getting to the wound as it should. Our wounds, they need the oxygen. They need the nutrient. They need to be able to have a good low of blood to carry those nutrients to the wound as needed. And now if we're smoking or excessive alcohol, it is going to restrict blood flow. So our wounds are not getting the proper nutrients and oxygen that they do need to repair and heal. And then we have stress. So chronic stress can negatively impact wound healing. So it impacts the immune function and this slows down the healing process. So if you do feel stress, it is important that we do some relaxation technique like deep breathing or mindfulness, and this will help reduce stress and let our body properly heal. So as you can see, incorporating the right nutrition and proper hydration can significantly enhance wound healing. You got to remember that our body needs support during the wound healing process. So prioritize nutrition and getting enough water into your diet diet to help speed up that healing process. If you found this video helpful, please do share it out to anyone you think may need to watch this. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I do want to share, I was just able to hit 10,000 subscribers and I am so excited about that. I thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. It It's really a passion of mine. I absolutely love wound care and I am so grateful that I have a platform to be able to share all the knowledge that I have with you guys. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button as it only helps my channel reach more people. And if you have any wound care questions, please leave it down in the comment below. I'm going to try to start making videos um, based off of your guys' questions. Now, I do get the question a lot that I'm not showing pictures of wounds. It's because it's super, super hard for me to do that because as a partner with YouTube, you have to follow strict guidelines. And most of my videos that I've tried to upload with pictures of wounds that have been honestly awesome and I wish I could share with you guys, um, they get red flag and I can't post them. So I am trying my best to do things in a way where I can still get out information and don't get my channel banned. So I do apologize. I've had a few people frustrated with me over this, um, but I'm really trying my best to get the education out there. I know that I can't show the wounds, especially in the case studies and it, it really sucks. <laughs> different for me. It sucks that I can't share it with you guys. But once again, these videos are getting red flag and half the time I have to go in, take out all of the actual pictures out of it, uh, re-record and then upload it. So it has been frustrating for me too. But just know that I am trying my best uh, to get the education out there to you guys. So I want to thank you for watching and take care of your help. I will catch you in my next video. Bye for now.